welcome to a new episode. Today you join me down here in Yokohama in a very nice uh, quiet neighborhood. Lots of buildings, apartment buildings. We're here to visit Iding Power, a very famous BMW tuner and Ferrari tuner that's been around for 50 years. So they've actually been in this location in Yokohama before any of these houses or buildings were even built. It was all countryside, as Ida-san, the owner, told me. So you just don't see places like this anymore. And this follows up the track day that we were invited to participate with uh, Ida-san and his customers at Fuji Speedway. And I think, you know, a shop visit was very much in order because I really want to kind of portray what Iding Power is all about. Um, you know, we went through the fact that Ida-san only builds complete cars. Uh, you can't just, you know, buy one of his aero kits or just the engine. It has to be a complete car. And this has really put him in the map as one of the very few Japanese tuners in Japan that literally built his own very well-developed, very well-rounded cars. And it's all about BMWs and Ferraris, as you see there. It's a very quiet uh, weekday morning here and they have very special cars in for maintenance, starting with this Ferrari 430, which is actually called the Iding Power 460, uh, because it is indeed another complete car that Ida-san developed. It's been stroked to 4.6 liters, so uh, generates uh, substantially more power. Um, and he was saying that the owner of this car, who owns a lot of cars, uh, has told him that this is probably the only car he wouldn't sell. It just feels so great. They've really nailed the way the engine responds and how the whole car was developed. And of course that includes their original aero down to the magnesium alloy wheels, like every car that they make. It's got louvered uh, front fenders and again, redesigned front bumper. So it, it is very much a complete car, much like the Enzo, which is crazy. I mean, who modifies Enzos? These are the only two Iding Power Enzos that Ida-san has built. Uh, this was recently completed. Again, a complete aero package that redesigns the car, you know, from the bumper, uh, extending the lip spoiler there in carbon fiber to get more balanced uh, downforce. The bumper is redesigned with a very F1 inspired front nose design. We go into the custom fenders here that have louvers again to get rid of hot air from the wheel wells. The fender mirrors have been eliminated and replaced with these cameras that have two very well positioned and engineered screens that bolt onto the back of the instrument pinnacle. So very well executed. You can see what they look like here. Again, all in the pursuit of excellence. Basically, he's really taking one of Ferrari's most epic cars and making it better. So again, stroked engine, about a 60 to 70 horsepower gain, custom exhaust, all the aero, all the package that has been redesigned here is all done in carbon fiber, like the original Ferrari OEM panels. We have again, uh, magnesium alloy wheels. The car runs 345, 30, ZR20, Michelin. And this is the one that's being worked on right now. This is the original development car that was actually in Germany when the project initially started, which is why he's kept the original German number plate. There was originally a plan back when I came here about 10 years ago for the first time Ida-san was trying to develop a redesigned underfloor to really boost uh, the downforce of the car, but it turned out it was going to be way too troublesome to kind of design and develop. So he did what he could, uh, starting with this frontless spoiler we saw in the red car. You can see how it's attached to the front bumper. And 
over to the first Ferrari that was originally done by Edison, the 328 GTB. So this has been stroked again for a boost of 50 to 60 horsepower and it features uh, a complete bottom end. It's got ported and polished heads, custom exhaust system, custom intake, and some exterior touches, the idling power exhaust. So this is one of uh, many that he built back in the day. And of course, there are the BMWs. But you probably saw the, the video where I actually got to drive one of Ida-san's M1s at Fuji Speedway, which was a big surprise because who on earth thought you know, that you would drive an M1 in your lifetime? Talk about bucket list stuff. So this car is another car. It's completely stock right now. The owner has just dropped it off because uh, he's decided to go for the same engine package that the white car I drove in Fuji had. Very special car because it has the M coloring on the side and the white Campagnolo wheels. The other white car had silver ones. I think I probably like these. They're, they're kind of like a, an off-white. Kind of matches the slightly cream colored white of the body. Beautiful machine, legendary stuff here. And that very special cabin. It looks massive when you open the door, but uh, once you get inside, you realize it's pretty cramped. And of course, pedal box all to the right, so you're kind of slanted when you drive it. These cars from this kind of era are always slightly flawed in kind of quirky ways, and it just adds to the driving experience. Of course, Ida's big love when it comes to BMWs is the E30. He's done so many takes on these cars, you know, using the S14 engine in different packages, offering three or four tuning stages, and also doing the straight six swap from the E36. And the E36 is probably the most popular BMW complete car that he's made so far. He's built so many of these. I'll have to ask actually how many in total were created and still are being built today. I mean, the requests keep coming in and with the video me and Larry did for Haggerty, um, I think, and I really hope that some people from the US are gonna appreciate these cars and maybe put in an order and get some of these amazing cars to the US and other countries because they really deserve to be sampled and driven uh, by enthusiasts because they are very, very special machine. They have a very special essence that um, you, know, you can only get with a fully, completely developed car uh, like Ida-san has done. And speaking of Ida-san, he's right here with Kohei Takada from Motorhead Magazine and this beautiful M5. Okay, so I've just asked uh, Ida-san and apparently 17 of these E36 complete cars have been made over the years with a few more orders coming in lately. place of the shop that I want to show you. You have to go up these very steep, extremely JDM style stairs to the top here, where this appropriately named room, the porting room is. And this, let me get the lights on. So this is where all uh, the porting jobs are done. Preparation of heads, so you can see the the airlines coming in there. I guess, you know, everything is cleaned up, various components and some springs being restored here and a bunch of engines waiting to either be rebuilt or refreshed. One little surprise is this flat 12 Ferrari Testarossa engine, which of course has the gearbox under it. I just love seeing how, you know, famous brands like this work and Smelling, I mean, this place smells amazing. It's just like a mix of paint and oil and just that grimy kind of texture to everything. Really cool. Okay, let's go downstairs to another little room. And this little room here where engines are built and put together. I eat this coffee, my friend. So these are the cone rods that are being prepared uh, for this particular engine. So the bottom end is here. Cone rods are getting ready. The bearings and here, as I was shooting before, I know there's the matching head here, which is already being ported, polished and assembled. 
and ready to be used. Ah, arigatou gozaimasu. So this is the bottom end. Crank is in. You can see it's already been fully balanced and ready to be filled up with the rest of the components. So cone rods and pistons and all the good stuff. So yeah, it's basically a production line for like extremely, you know, highly strung, uh, powerful engines that go into amazing cars like these. So across this other side of the shop under this massive apartment building is, oh, hang on a second. I've got to show you this. This is a uh, Kohei's 964 Carrera 2. It's sitting on uh, Yokohama Advan GT's sick black 964. Kind of makes me jealous. I'm still waiting for mine to be fixed up. Two more months to go on that. So here's the official hiding power. And as you come in, this is the customer reception area and the office down here. And how about this for a way to kind of meet your customers? A nice uh, display of connecting rods, pistons, and beautiful, fully balanced crank. So here's that 328, sorry, 348 GTB engine. The Iding Power complete version. But this, this is the very special thing that makes Iding Power even crazier than you would have assumed seeing the cars we just went to see in the shop. So uh, I just asked ili -san to kind of give me a few more detailed specs of the V12 engine that he's actually uh, designed and built himself. So let's go back into the shop here and kind of have a bit of a breakdown of what this massive V12 is all about. So basically this is the engine over here that he created back in 96, 97. So there was two versions of it. So one has 645 horsepower or PS rather, and the race version, which had this intake, uh, puts out 804. So it's a six liter or 5,955 CC, uh, 60 degree V12. Compression is 11 to one. Uh, red line, uh, 9.5 for the road version, 10,000 for the race version. And basically all the specs were laid out here. These are the blueprints. So this is all the drawings that he made back in the day for the engine assembly. He ended up casting the block and the head and developing the engine himself. So he had the engine uh, fully built. Right here is Takara-san is showing me. He got the engine on a dyno, a bench dyno to do all the testing and development. So it is a fully functional, ready to go motor. And the original idea was to drop this engine into another uh, complete car. It's probably the most uh, crazy project that he ever came up with. It hasn't been realized yet, but we're gonna see some drawings soon so we can see what he was thinking. And this is what the V12 was supposed or could potentially still be dropped into. So this is a 355 Ferrari base and obviously stretch to fit the engine and the transmission and the name was supposed to be Iding F648 GTA. So if there's anybody crazy enough out there to commission a build like this, it's all ready to go. We just need a donor car. <laughs> ah, so basically here, he actually built and developed the engine to be dropped into a McLaren F1. So back in the day, he was the service center here in Japan for McLaren and looked after the F1s that came to Japan. And his idea was just to go a little bit crazier and do something even wilder with the V12. So he designed his own engine. Uh, he's a good, very good friend of Gordon Murray. And uh, he was the only person, as he keeps uh, you know, pointing out, that uh, was given the okay to modify the F1 from Gordon Murray. So even Gordon understood the potential that Ida-san had and his, just, his philosophy and just energy when it just comes to extracting the best performance out of cars. So this is the inside of the intake plenum, which is carbon fiber and it's vertically mounted. He actually made uh, a test engine that was dropped into a 1997 Mercedes E-Class that had a different manifold design. It was flatter, it was more, uh, more keen to the, to the road version of the engine. Here is that first engine that he made and put into the Mercedes. So as you can see, the manifold design is completely different. It has the Iding power name and this cut a bit of power, obviously, because it was squeezed into a much uh, tighter engine bay. But this was basically only done for testing. 
it was never uh, sold as a complete car because the idea was to finalize this and turn it into um, the race version of the engine and drop it into the McLaren F1 or potentially the 355. Okay, and next to the shop, a few customer cars. So we have the white E30 demo car that we uh, got tossed the keys at Fuji and did a shoot on and a customer E36 complete car from Okayama. So he's gonna get the keys because um, this is one of the best E30s I've ever driven. Um, such a high response, high revving engine. And the car is so stripped out, it actually weighs nothing. So potentially a good track car. Uh, he's actually thinking of taking it to Scuba, maybe get a uh, baseline time just for fun. Definitely a, a sub minute um, car potentially. So we'll take a look inside. So again, the thing that surprised me about this car is that it is stripped out, but it's so nicely upholstered and just executed with the roll cage even being wrapped in leather, all the stitching beautifully done. There's a little custom uh, instrument panel here because obviously the center console is being pulled out. Carbon Kevlar hood and carbon intake manifold. You got JRZ dampers with remote mounted reservoirs. You can see how even the suspension turrets have been stiffened just like on DTM cars. Serious amount of uh, negative camber. Yeah, a work of art. We uh, lowered the black Enzo and I thought I'd just take a quick wander around because even though it's exactly the same as the red one, there's something special about a black Enzo. So that's what 4.6 liters sounds like hiding power stroke absolutely wild so apparently the owner that commissioned this build uh, has a lot of cars in his collection and this is the only car that he doesn't want to sell because it's so special and so unique understandably so Okay, so that brings this episode to a close. I really hope you enjoyed taking a look at one of the most special car builders here in Japan. I think we need more people like Ida-san in the world. Uh, they get what the essence of you know, car enthusiasm is all about. And just that, that thing about extracting that little bit extra performance from already impressive and amazing cars. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know below what you thought and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.